today I have with me Trisha, um, and she has uh, Faithful Spring Farms in Lebanon, Missouri. Um, and that is about a three and a half hour drive from me, um, but it is so worth it. Um, and I just wanted to introduce um, her to you guys. Um, and to let you know that number one, having a relationship with a farmer is not scary. <laughs> um, it's actually even easier than it is to go to a grocery store. Um, and with my illness with multiple sclerosis um, and bipolar disorder, I have found that I can't eat the grocery store meat. Um, and so I've had to go reach out to local farms to get better meat and cleaner meat. And uh, Trisha's meat has actually been so healing for me and it just keeps getting better. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to meet with you today and um, there's so much unknown. There's so much, especially with me, I'm on such a learning curve to understand why? Why do I eat the meat in the grocery store and I get reactions? It's still meat. I'm still carnivore. But when I eat your meat, I feel so much better. What is it that is different about the meat in the grocery store and the meat that you serve? I think when you buy meat from a farmer and you buy local meat, you're avoiding a lot of stress on the animal. Okay. So um, those are things that we don't really consider, but if we think of our own bodies, when we go under stress, the hormones we produce, um, it, it's not a positive response all the time. And if you think about animals as they move maybe from where they were born to another farm to another farm and then um, to be finished and then to a packing facility where there's all different types of animals, those are all stress-filled environments. And so it's negatively impacting mm. them in a way stress negatively impacts us. So by buying from a farmer, you are able to purchase your food from a place where the animal has been cared for, has been nurtured, has been taken care of um, on a day-to-day -day basis. That makes sense because, I mean, I, I thought when I, when I first started carnivore, I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, like whatever, that's all happy and everything to have, you know, a happy little cow, like, on the sound of music, you know, like, you know, frolicking through the fields, whatever. But I didn't recognize that it actually was affecting me how the animal was cared for. Um, that is one thing we've really noticed since we've moved here because um, the flavor of the meat we produced in Iowa, even though it was grass fed, grass finished, tasted different than the meat, the meat we produced here. And so, my husband and I, um, we dove in, why, why would it taste so much differently? Mm. And um, because grass-fed beef and grass-finished beef kind of have a negative connotation. If you talk to any person that's not a carn carnivore, they would say, oh, it tastes, it tastes off, it tastes yeah. wild, it tastes different. It's, mm -hmm. You can tell it's grass-finished. And um, so anyway, we started looking at that and we realized that when we lived in Iowa and we had off-farm jobs and we weren't ranching solely, we would take our animal to the packing house or the, the butcher shop the night before. And so that, that animal had those stress hormones mm. for those 12 hours or so, um, eight hours maybe, surging through their body because they were scared. And so that's when we really started realizing that every time an animal has to move, from whether it's from farm to farm or farm to um, the semi to the packing house, yeah. um, that creates that stress. And we're realizing that that's a, a, a deviant to the taste and flavor. Um, but also something you you don't want in your meat, and mm -hmm. we don't need in our meat. Absolutely, and um, so 
as far as practice goes, why don't all farmers practice the way that you practice? The learning curve is big. Okay. The learning curve is big. It's um, hard to do it in an industrial scale. Okay. It's, it's not something you can do in a large scale in a short amount of time. It takes a lot of time. And so we choose to regeneratively grow our beef because of life circumstances that happened before us. Um, but we chose that path and we found that we've had healthier animals, mm -hmm. um, happier animals, and it's just a path that we started and we're continuing to learn and grow from as we've continued to raise our animals this way. So at, by regenerative meat, I talk about we rotate our cows on a daily basis. So they go to a fresh, fresh patch of grass every day or a fresh paddock of grass every single day. And they know, I mean, they're happy. Cows have happy walks when they're walking, <laughs> their heads nod, they know they're going to a better place and they trust us. And so um, it's, as a farmer, it's really gratifying to know you're taking really good care of them because mm. every day about, and it varies, but usually 24 hours, they get rotated to the next patch and they are waiting at the gate ready to go. And they know that they're gonna get fresh groceries that um, they haven't grazed on it. So there's no manure, there's no urine, it's clean. Mm. And so I, I think that's also a term that's thrown around a lot, you know, regenerative meat. And it's, it, for me, it was a learning curve because I was like, what are you regenerating? But you're regenerating the land. Right, we are regenerating the soil. Yeah. So, and then the soil will feed the grass and the, and the legumes and all of the foliage, and then those will feed our animals. And so when we look out on a pasture, we don't see weeds. We see, oh, well, there is another uh, green that has more vitamins and nutrients they're pulling from the soil to feed our animals. So for us to see a weed, we look at it totally different than maybe a conventional farmer would, would see a weed. Yeah, and then also it's just like this cycle of, you know, the, the, the salad bar, you know, that basically the, that cow eats that salad bar and then tramples on that, that salad bar and then moves into another area. And then whenever they come back, they're basically, they've prepared for themselves a better salad bar. Yes. Oh, definitely. And if you ever watch a cow when they've turned onto a fresh paddock of grass, they know what's the healthiest grass to eat. Really? Their nose will be to the ground and they will walk along and they will stop. If they, if they can, um, if they sense and they smell a taste of grass that has better quality for them, they will stop and eat it. Wow. So it's, it's amazing to sit and observe your cows when you've turned them into that fresh pack of grass. It's one of my favorite things to do. That's awesome. That's awesome. And um, so part of my journey has been, um, a, I'm going to be totally honest, a poverty mentality that I only got the meat that was at Walmart, the meat that was right there available to me um, and that I could get on food stamps. And so I felt like um, I was just doing what I could. And, and I'm a very, very stubborn person. Um, and so it wasn't until I had these health problems rear their ugly head again that I was forced to seek out regenerative meat. Um, but I have been pleasantly surprised with not only the relationship of with my farmer, but the relationship even with the cows. Like, um, Trisha let me uh, ride out with the cows uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, and I was just able to thank them, you know, and to say, and I know that sounds silly that I'm sitting here talking to cows, but it was, uh, it, it was, it was like completing that cycle to be able to thank them for being my medicine because I wasn't able to walk um, with the multiple sclerosis. Um, I wasn't able to get out of bed with the bipolar disorder. It is because of cows that I can, that I get that healing and I get that medicine. Um, 
So for me, it's valuable. For me, it is I would pay whatever I have to pay to function. Mm -hmm. I can't go back to where I was. I can't go back to not being able to walk. I can't go back to not being able to get out of bed. But um, I see that, and I, I have been able to see that through my journey, um, but it, it's very difficult for other people who just eat whatever's in the grocery store to see the, the value of why it costs more. And I think the difficult thing about meat in the grocery store is you are trusting someone else to certify that this meat is safe for you and your circumstance. Um, I think that seeing and listening and smelling with your own eyes how the meat is produced is a much more efficient certification of the quality of the meat than any grass-fed, grass-finished. I mean, the labels in and of themselves are so confusing. Um, and organic and sustainable and um, animal welfare certified. I mean, those are all labels that we strove, you know, we would strive to achieve when we were producing. And then um, we just realized at that point we weren't we weren't benefiting yeah. even from those. And so we were so thankful to find you <laughs> because. Um, you appreciated what we were doing mm -hmm. because we cared for the land and the animals that were given to us. Well, and I believe that relationship trumps label. Yeah. Um, and title, you know, to be an organic, uh, grass fed, uh, regenerative, whatever, USDA, you know, all of those labels mean nothing when I can look in your eyes, when I can walk on your land, when I can see your cows, I, 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 it, it, there's a total different knowing. It doesn't matter what the label is. And then my personal experience, that whenever I put your meat in my mouth and then my body functions better than it ever has, I don't need a label. I don't need a label. I don't need any kind of certification um, because the proof is in the product. The proof is in how I feel better, um, but I don't know how to get other eaters or other people to this place because hopefully other people aren't as sick as I am, <laughs> you know. Um, but you know, we get really stubborn and we get really set in our ways, and it's Walmart, you know, it's right there. Right, and that's kind of the unfortunate thing. I mean, this is um, a own family health scare with our youngest son is what kind of forced us down this path many years ago. And I, I think it's unfortunate that we have to get to the point where we have, um, where our health is at so brittle or um, so fragile that we have to search out something different. Um, if we could be more preventative instead of reactionary. Yeah so that we didn't experience that. But I mean, we all come to it at different points or different ways. And um, obviously I think, like you said, coming to our farm is just more than getting the food that you need to live and survive, but it's also an experience. You get to understand what is going on here and what it looks like um, and really appreciate the meat in a different level, a deeper level. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I have, and I, I, it's been like taking a course, you know, just to be able to, every time I, I, I swear you teach me a new word every time, <laughs> you know, I'm like, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's coal? What's poor? What's this? You know? Um, and it, you know, it, it is, uh, an experience, you know, and having a relationship with a farmer is an experience. Um, and it's it's worth it, you know, for me to drive three and a half hours and and to spend a little bit more because it's really not that much more that I spend at all because we've developed a relationship where you know I'm not going to go to Walmart next week, right? You know, you know that you are my source and that that is where I'm going to come for the meat. Um, and I really think that as people 
we know and we have these open conversations that they know that there is a better choice or that there is another option. Um, I think that they don't know right now. And I think that's a lot of people maybe uh, do not feel like they have the time or um, the energy, but um, again, it goes back to the experience and having that relationship and a, another person that cares about you personally and how you are doing um, is, is as important. Yeah. And um, the, the way that I found um, Trisha was through localharvest.org, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, that is something that you can use all the way, all throughout, you know, your areas um, to find a local farmer for you. But um, you are considering or in the process of being able to ship, correct? Yes. So we are checking out um, what would be required for us to ship meat. Um, and there's a lot that goes into <laughs> what is required for that. Yeah, but I mean, um, with all that is happening, people are finding that comfort in being able to have things delivered to them versus having to go to a store and not knowing um, what they will encounter or what safety um, issues they may feel or not feel or <laughs> Yeah. For whatever reason, going to a store is not the way it used to be. Um, and not something necessarily people want to find um, the security of it. Like, Well, I, I got to tell you, I don't trust the store. Like, mm -hmm. I don't trust, you know, big food chains or corporations or labels. I don't trust the government. I don't trust USDA, you know, to tell me where that meat is from. Mm-hmm. And that it's even from, and if it's from another country, what else has that animal had to go through? Right. And I've even learned that some cattle are moved from one country to another and then finished off in another country and then packaged and then shipped back here. And oh my gosh. And then whenever I realize that it's about stress hormones and that's what I'm reacting to, it's just like, Duh, you know, it makes so much sense just to go to your local source yeah. and find a local source and then for them to ship out the meat. That makes sense. Yeah, and if you can go to your local farmer and, and make it your responsibility as a consumer to really know what you are consuming, I think that's, that's key. And if you were to, just the unknown at the grocery store would be one, and you don't know that these cows and calves and feeders haven't had antibiotics, they haven't had hormones, they haven't been fed grain. Um, and you don't know until you've actually been there to investigate yourself. And I think just taking control of your own personal health and the health that a carnivore diet provides or whatever type of food you consume, just knowing where it comes from is key. Awesome. So anything else that you would like to add? Um, I think that we're going to have many, many, many more conversations. Yeah, there's, there's so many things that make um, buying from a farmer um, incredibly special and a wonderful experience and a positive experience. But just knowing, too, that you're supporting a small local farm and yeah. not knowing what our future holds, um, supporting a local farmer um, that's is it's key to our food security so absolutely because that's where it starts yeah. you know um, so thank you so much for your time um, not only today but um, you've been on this journey for eight plus um, yeah actually it's been almost 14 years 14 years yeah. 14 years <laughs> 14 years that you've been on this journey um, and uh, I, I just I recognize the value and I I'm a very stubborn person so the fact that it got through to me means that there are going to be so many other people that it's going to get through to I mean it, it it is just going to eventually be our new norm and we can only hope so because I know there's a lot of other farmers out there that um, they want to be providing food for people and they want to be providing healthy food for people and i think um, supporting them so we can continue to have 
the opportunity to get healthy food is going to be key. Yeah, because um, I mean, I I don't have the option. I mean, I, I can't eat out of the grocery store. So this is my only option and I, it, it's essential to my survival and my vitality to keep the local farms strong. Um, and I'm just, I'm so, so grateful. And I just, I think we need to keep this conversation so we can let people know that there's options. Yeah. Um, so how would somebody uh, get a hold of you? What's your website? FaithfulSpringFarms.com. FaithfulSpringFarms.com. Oh, farm. Farm. Dot yep. com. Not hope. FaithfulSpringFarm.com. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you are in the process of being able to ship. Um, yes. But for right now, we are located in Lebanon, Missouri. So it's a worth the drive um, if you're close. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you. All right.